perform for you here today. Today I will narrate for you a precision free fall. It's performed by members of the 101st Airborne Division's Parachute Demonstration Team, the Screaming Eagles. From Leonardo da Vinci to the Wright Brothers, man has dreamt of flight. After many years of trial and error and from sheer determination, along came the airplane. But for some, this was not enough. For they dreamt of flight not simply by mechanical means, but flight as a bird, able to fly high through the sky in total freedom. There are but a few who have experienced this dream, and today you will be witness to some who have mastered it. Today the team will perform what is known as the Demonstration Accuracy Stack. Ladies and gentlemen, if you will direct your attention to the aircraft high above, you will see it as it turns on to its jump run. At this time, our jump master's head is outside of the aircraft in the wind and the cold as he aligns it to the precise exit point. Due to the extreme amounts of wind and engine noise, the jump master must use hand and arm signals in order to communicate with his jumpers and pilots. If you watch closely, you may even notice the nose of the aircraft moving slightly to the left or slightly to the right. If you continue to watch the aircraft, you should be able to see the jumpers for today's performance as they exit. The jumpers are out and the smoke is on. Currently, the jumpers are placing their canopies through a series of controllability checks. These left and right hand turns allow the jumpers to ensure that their canopies are functioning properly. In the unfortunate event that a jumper encounters a malfunctioning parachute, he has the ability to safely release his main and deploy his reserve or backup. Canopies used by the Screaming Eagles today are high performance ram air canopies made of a lightweight ripstop nylon. These parachutes are highly maneuverable and have a forward speed of approximately 20 miles per hour. In the jumper's hands are steering toggles attached to the rear of their canopies. To turn left, the jumper must simply pull on his left toggle. To turn right, he must pull on the right. And to stop or slow down the canopy, he must simply pull down simultaneously on both. As you can see, our jumpers are currently setting up traffic patterns much like that of an aircraft at an airport. This consists of a crosswind, downwind, base leg, and their final approach. Landing dead center in the target area requires a great deal of concentration, so the jumpers must remain constantly aware of wind speed and directions at all times. To enable the jumpers to land a target area, we have placed a wind streamer. As the jumpers turn on to their final approach, he will shift all of his attention to the little black dot in the center of the target area. He would utilize his toggles, making small inputs to control the canopy. Our first jumper flares for a nice target area landing. Once again, as our second jumper turns on to his approach, watch how he continuously adjusts to the wind speed and direction to make a soft, safe landing within the target area. He's coming in, and he shuts it down for a beautiful target area landing. Jumper number three sets up. He goes to brakes. And another safe target area landing, ladies and gentlemen. And finally, as our last jumper closes in the stack, making continuous adjustments, slowing his canopy down for a target area landing. And a nice target area landing. 
The Screaming Eagles originated back in 1958 during the infancy of precision free fall itself. Early team members were soldiers who volunteered their free time in order to perform quality parachute demonstrations. After many years of noted success, the Army decided to form a full-time parachute team, and they are known today as the Golden Knights. And in 1984, the 101st Command Group opted to form their very own full-time parachute team, and today we are known as the Screaming Eagles. As the last of our jumpers continue to take off their equipment, I would like to use this opportunity to introduce them to you in the order of their performance. First, performing the difficult task of ground control and ensuring, ensuring that our demonstration runs smoothly is a communication specialist from Eatonville, Washington with over 1,500 parachute jumps, Staff Sergeant Michael Chafe. Landing first and flying our nation's colors is an airborne ranger from Stone Mountain, Georgia with over 1,000 parachute jumps, Sergeant Joe Jones. Next in the lineup is a communication specialist from Hohenwald, Tennessee with over 600 parachute jumps, Sergeant Heath Landrum. Next in the lineup and flying video for the team today is a military police investigator from Littleton, Colorado with over 650 parachute jumps, Staff Sergeant Chuck Laird. And finally, leading the Screaming Eagles in free fall today, our team leader is an airborne ranger from Big Sky, Montana with over 900 parachute jumps, Sergeant First Class Thomas Livingston. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you members of the 101st Airborne Division's Parachute Demonstration Team of the, moon new, the new Millennium, the Screaming Eagles. At this time, a member of the Screaming Eagles would like to present a photo of the Screaming Eagles in free fall to Mr. Glenn Denton. He's the chairman for the Paducah Summer Festival. And this is in appreciation for allowing us the opportunity to showcase our talents for you here today. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to say what a pleasure it is for us to perform for you here today. Thank you and blue skies. That was pretty cool, don't you think? The Screaming Eagles out of Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Jumping out of a helicopter at, way up there and uh, coming down, making some precision landings right here, live on the Paducah Riverfront. And here we are again. And there's gonna be some people walking in front of us, but that's okay, y'all can walk on by. And, uh, but they're here. Because